We are rolling. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sean. You're here in my studio. It's late at night. There's no one else around. I haven't even bothered to try to make the room look nice because I've got this video that I wanted to record. This has been on my mind. I knew I was going to have to make a video about it after the holidays. And now here we are as I record. It's the first week of January. What I wanted to make this video about was sort of a channel update and a message that I'm sending out, some communications for all of the supporters, fans, anybody who's watched our videos, anybody who's enjoyed our content, to give you an update about where we're at, where things are going, and where we go from here. So you've by now seen the clickbaity, uh, hyperbolic title, I'm retiring from YouTube, question mark, because I'm letting you know. The content you love is not going anywhere. This is still going to be the home of your favorite Spider-Man, Joker, Batman, Marvel, DC, cosplay, comedy content. That's still going to be here. The changes that I'm talking about are more like some changes that are going to help me deliver even greater like entertainment value to you and for this channel to give you levels that you've never seen before. So let me bring you up to speed. So let me take you back to just before the pandemic when that was coming around. So we're up in like coming out of the holidays into 2020, soaring. We're looking like we're just weeks from hitting 5 million subscribers. Videos are going off to the stratosphere regularly. We just got done a five video campaign for a Marvel trading card app that was a huge success crushed it and then when they announced that the pandemic lockdowns were coming in it looks like somebody came along with a pair of scissors and in my analytics it looks like they just went snip 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 like you could look at it and see how it just like has that like snipped it right off a lot of changes took place in like viewing habits and how people are living and the consumption patterns on this channel and on youtube at large we had all kinds of big plans to do things in 2020. i have been to every Comic-Con I've ever dreamed of going to as a kid. I've been to them all to make videos now, and we're talking about going overseas. My dream ever since I was little was to one day be a movie director, so we've got these like more Hollywood kind of special effects videos that are getting ready to go. And all of that came to a halt when those lockdowns got announced. So I spent 2020 sort of treading water a bit, just sort of making what I could on the fly, figuring any minute now we're going to be able to get back to what we were doing. So by the time we got up into the holidays 2020 into 2021, that's when I went through this whole like dark night of the soul period where I was thinking about figure that whatever you thought you were going to do for 2020, figure that's just gone now, right? So what else you got? And I was thinking about how, like I said, I'd always wanted to be a movie director. And I was thinking about like the path that I thought was going to get me there. And I thought about how even back when I was doing comics and selling my little comic books on the street to people that I photocopied at Staples, it, just because that was a thing I could do with what I had, right? I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a, a internet connection, a smartphone of my own. I had to go across the hall to my roommate's room to check my email, that kind of lifestyle. I didn't have cable for most of high school growing up, right? We were just a very, like, not technology. Never had a computer in the house. We just weren't, like, a technologically advanced family. So knowing that I didn't really have access to the equipment and knowing that film school was just not in the cards for me, I barely graduated high school. Neither of my parents and none of my grandparents ever even graduated high school. So, like, education wasn't a thing that we put, like, a huge value on as, as, a, 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 as a family culture. So I knew that I had to go another way and sort of maybe build something in other areas that I could then parlay into somebody giving me the resources that I need, right? So that's kind of how I got into comics at first. The beginning of my art career, so to speak, is me at a telemarketing place, looking at the clock, realizing that like time is going away on me and I'm never going to get this time back and I've kind of got lost time to make up for it. So I just stopped showing up to work, was making my own comic books at the time anyway, only recently started challenging myself to actually like, it doesn't matter if it's good, you just gotta complete a whole book and show it to people. So I did a couple of those and that gave me a little boost in confidence so that by issue number like three or four of my little photocopied series, I was starting to get confident to where I'm showing them to strangers and I ended up just, there's a whole video about this where I just sort of on a goof was asking people in the street if they wanted to buy one and enough people stopped and said sure how much, that that's what sort of like got me on and that was years of my life. And then the release parties that I staged around that got me noticed by some TV people. I got a job behind the scenes of a late night show in Canada here called Ed's Night Party. If any of you who had access to Canadian television in the 90s and 2000s remember a gray sock puppet with the green hair and the cigar. Like I worked for that TV show for two years, the last two years of its run. 
And by the time I came out the other end of that, like I'm already flying high. I'm thinking, oh, I'm in TV. I'm, I'm booking, booking shows to promote my comic books and I'm getting up and performing. And now I've got a little music thing going on. I'm performing at the radio station. Like all these things are happening. And it all seemed like it was coalescing into the TV thing, which was going to be my big plateau to then go off and, and go do movies. So when the TV thing did not work out, that just put me in a position of like, oh God, that was my shot and I've blown it, right? And I was almost like I was too timid to like make another move because there was this fear that kicked in of like, you know, everybody's expecting me to have this big thing to show for where I've been and what I've been doing. And so when I didn't have that, it's almost like I was too afraid to kind of get going again. I didn't know what move to make because no matter what direction I could go in, it felt like I was starting all over. The whole YouTube thing got going for me because I was booking release parties for new issues of my comic books, booking bands and having them in downtown venues and whatnot. And I started making little movies to screen at these release events that were sort of like my idea of segments of a TV show about me as this artist making these comic books. And that sort of started getting some run out, some run out around town. I started putting the videos from there up on YouTube after the event so that people who were at the party could check them out later. So by the, by the time the whole TV thing kind of happened or rather didn't happen, and I was kind of chewed up and spit out the other side and kind of wondering now what am I gonna do? I latched onto the YouTube thing because I realized that like it was something that I could commit to doing every single day. I could do a daily vlog every day and sort of like chart and manifest and does you know use the move the use the videos as a vehicle to sort of design a new life for myself. <laughs> so that channel that I had started then turned into this daily vlog project. So when I had ideas for more polished scripted comedy bits. I didn't feel like they belonged on that vlog channel, so I created the new channel, The Sean Ward Show, and started putting stuff on there. I was putting stuff on there as being experimental with it for about two years between starting the channel and then my first success, which was this viral video called Batman's Night Out, my first video that has a million views. Got a million views in a week, went crazy, viral, changed our lives, got on the news all over the world, all this kind of stuff, right? And just totally gave me that you know, now I've got a, a, a shining star, a north star to follow in the sky, right? Is going to be this idea of success on YouTube. And you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit to throwing everything I got and treating this as my full-time thing and put all my hopes and dreams on this YouTube thing. And I'm going to make it a success. So I had a couple of more viral videos throughout that year and I was up to three videos that had done over a million views and got on the news and I knew I was onto something. Then when I got the advice to maintain a weekly schedule as a means of helping to grow the channel, that was sort of like at the beginning of 2014. So when I started the weekly thing, after about three, four months, I noticed like a little bit of a lift off. Instead of watching the analytics for like the viral spike and the viral spike, it was more like we have lift off and it was like steady growth, right? Even though it was just a little bit, I could see it. It was like, oh, we're onto something, right? So from that about March 2014 until pandemic lockdowns came into place, okay? That is just like an amount of time that went vroom, right? And it's almost like I didn't even realize like how much time had passed or how long it's been or how long I've been doing this. And when I think back, if I chart it from when I got that first million viewed viral hit because that's when the firm declaration was made, okay, YouTube is my life as of now. Starting now, right? If I count it from there, it will have been 10 years in about six weeks from the time that I'm recording this. So that's what I'm getting reflecting on now is that I've been in this YouTube game from the bottom to the tippy top and everywhere in between, up and down again, a couple times. <laughs> but this, this game of like I'm living in this world of my passions, right? That my whole life is about superheroes, Spider-Man, Joker, like to my favorite stuff, Marvel, DC, superhero stuff, superhero movies, right? This is like my, been my passion since I was a child. Like I grew up with this idea that like a Batman movie comes out, right? Like the Michael Keaton and then the Val Kilmer, George Clooney, like that series. Like I was a kid when those were coming out. And the way that those movies, something about the marketing or maybe the way that my family talked about them or whatever, there was always this sense that like, the biggest priority anybody anywhere has is the next Batman movie. And all the rest of life is just like filling time until we can get to that next Batman movie. That's sort of like the milieu that I grew up in, right? And I've just never been disavowed of the notion that these superhero movies are just the most important thing 
everybody's top priority everywhere. You know what I mean? And so this is where I've been able to like carve out a niche for myself and earn a living deep, deep, deep into just being a fan of that. Find a spot right inside of this passion of mine from which to operate and make these videos. And so I got on where the game of like the right idea with the right script, with the right title and the right thumbnail and the right keywords in the description, like all of that cocktail, right? To be making these videos. And when they started getting like a million views again and it's getting more regularly, that was absolutely bonkers. Things really changed for me in 2015 when I uploaded uh, the video that right now has over 700 million views on it and is the number 10 most watched video on all of YouTube is that Spider-Verse flash mob video. And like that video, when it first had its initial success, right? I uploaded it and I forget how long it was, maybe a few days, maybe a couple weeks or something. But when it started going up, right? I was used to like my little viral spike. And then this was just like orders of magnitude to the point where I'm in my living room and you could ask my wife, who then was my girlfriend about this. And she could even tell you about this, that I was looking in my, in my YouTube analytics and I saw the couple days in a row of up and then up exponential and then way up exponential. And I started crying and my wife comes running. She's like, oh my God, what's wrong? And I went to weepy eyes and say, I've worked so hard. Cause I just got overwhelmed with like, I had been struggling and just barely making ends meet and getting by on this, this blind naive faith in myself that I can make something happen as a filmmaker and as an artist. How many years, how many years of getting almost there and then it not quite working out just to have to start all over again. Just how long, how much sacrifice, how much struggle. And here I am looking at it and just the knowledge that like worst case scenario as of right now, I don't have to worry about the rent for the next three months. And just the whammo of that was so emotional for me that I wept, I swear to God. So that's when the game like kicked into high gear. And that's when some of the people that became mainstays on the channel sort of started, you know, being in the mix and, and, and the team kind of crystallizing. And then it became several years sort of following the whole rise of the Zack Snyder DC movies and what Marvel was doing with the whole Avengers Infinity Saga and all that kind of stuff, riding the wave of that and just like being a fan of that for a living and having this YouTube channel as a means to do that. It was just so fun and it was the vehicle that allowed me to go and make videos at literally every Comic-Con I've ever wanted to go to as a kid that I dreamed that one day I was going to get to go. And then when I got a little older in my teens and sort of knew that I wanted to have a career sort of in the arts kind of thing and just oh, couldn't to be able to go there and it's on business. It's not even as a fan. Wouldn't that just beat it all, right? So then, like I said, we're kind of this, this thing had gotten so successful and so large that, you know, we've been to ever, all these comic cons, stick around in town for a couple days, go to MegaCon Orlando, stick around and take the whole team to Disney World, stick around in New York and do some sightseeing. Uh, I went to the con in Seattle and took a few extra days to take the train up over the border to see my grandfather in Vancouver, who I've only seen a few times when he's traveled over to the Toronto area. Like even th that kind of thing, right? That's experience that like, yeah, the money is nice, but it's not about the money, it's about the fact that I was able to do that and go see my grandpa and have, I'm getting a little emotional now, have that last visit with him before he passed on a year or a year and a half later. And, right, so this is just the blessings that I've been able to enjoy. And this is what this YouTube channel has done for me. And it all goes back to what I told you earlier was that moment of being on the phone at the telemarketing place and looking at that clock and just having this sense that, oh man, my life is not on the trajectory that I thought it would be. I am not doing anything with myself and my time that leads to me being this artist person that I swore my whole life that I was gonna be. Every disagreement I had with like a parents, teachers, authority, right? Authority figures was always about this idea that like, you don't get it. I'm gonna be this great artist. It's, I gotta be allowed to pursue this. And that moment of realizing that like, oh man, it's up to me now to just drop everything and throw everything I got, all my time, stripped down, lead this ultra minimalist lifestyle to be able to give everything I got to making this dream come true, right? 
And that's when I started selling comics on the street and that went along, I told you the story. So now fast forward to the present, where it's the first week of January, 2022, and I am sitting with this knowledge that I realized a year ago that, put it to you in the simplest of terms. One of the things that I realized in that space coming out of the holidays into 2020, the big realization moment that I had was that for how much I thought that success on this YouTube channel would open doors for me, I realized that if they haven't already, I'm probably never going to get a call from a Hollywood producer saying, yo, we saw your YouTube channel. We love it. Can we meet you? So realizing that if that call was going to come, it probably would have come by now. And sitting with that, if this stuff that I'm saying is going to happen is ever going to happen, it's now got to be up to me to make it happen through sheer force of will. That's the realization that I made a year ago. And I came up with this plan for five movies that I would make over 10 years. Number one is called the Snyder Cut the Movie. And you've heard me talk about that on live streams and on my blog on the Show.com. And what that one is about is my nonfiction animated work that's about my cartoon rendition of the behind the scenes drama of Zack Snyder making Man of Steel, Batman v Superman and Justice League. And David Ayer's Suicide Squad, that's all in there. So that whole hashtag release the Snyder Cut thing, that's the story of this movie that I'm making. So the update is that trying to do the graphic novel and the movie at the same time, because I thought if I could make them in tandem, then I'm doing the art for the comic and it's going over into the movie and I mean, really, like the poses from the movie can go into the art. And da, 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 da. But stuff just kept on happening where I kept on being the bottleneck again. So what I've decided now is that we're going to focus on having the artist, my sister, Cass, where you at? Shout out. Love you. My sister Cass is a brilliant artist and she's doing the art. So we're going to focus on getting the graphic novel done. I need the graphic novel to be in my hand looking at it to give me the fire, the juice of, okay, now I've got to take this and make a movie out of it. So that's the new strategy for the Snyder Cut the movie. The graphic novel is full speed ahead right now. And she's focusing on that while I'm focusing on the first draft of the screenplay for movie number two, which is something called Galactic Riff. This is a movie that I'm working on. I don't even mind telling you the idea because it's so good, but it's so me. In a very, very small nutshell, it's a monster movie that happens to a band that's staying at a hotel in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of them having all kinds of drama where they're breaking up. A lot more to it than that, and I'll have fun getting into that with you when the time is right. So I've got some dope people already involved with it, and those people are like the next, all of these different next steps and all these different directions all depend on having that first draft of the screenplay as part of this package. So my sister's doing the art on the Snyder Cut graphic novel while I'm doing the screenplay for Galactic Riff. Movie number three is the idea out of all of these that I started working on first, which is my comedic parody take on the story of the collaboration between Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and the early days of Marvel Comics in the 1960s. Now I wanna get my teeth cut on these other movies first because by the time we get to that one, it's gonna require new levels of uh, action choreography and closing down streets and vintage cars and it's a period piece, right? It takes place in the 60s. So given that that's gonna be such a bigger thing, I feel like I need to gain more experience before I can tackle that and hence the Snyder Cut and Galactic Riff. Okay, so if I'm successful in pulling those three off, that's a work now alongside with what I've done on the YouTube channel. That that definitely has got to get somebody asking me the question, hey, what do you see yourself doing at a studio? To which I can say, I'm glad you asked. Because since I was a kid, I've had an idea for, imagine if it was a CGI animated, but otherwise live action, Captain Carrot and the Amazing Zoo Crew with a Superman cameo in it. Like, how cool would that be? I've also got a pitch for a thing that involves Rocket Raccoon and Howard the Duck and all the Marvel animal characters, but <laughs> so either one of those could be next. And then it gets super pie in the sky because if that actually happens and that's actually a success, like at that point, like sky's the limit, right? So at that point, the dream is that 
the right person in the right office can dust off that old Yellow Submarine remake package that they were putting together, right? You might have seen clips about it online when they were developing it, that Robert Zemeckis was going to do his Polar Express and Christmas Carol style and do a, 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 a computer-generated remake of the Beatles' Yellow Submarine animated movie. Well, I'm convinced, or maybe I'm just convincing myself, that the reason that project didn't happen is because it needs me to come along and be the one to do it. So dare to dream that this is all what I can make happen. So this is the plan that I came up with coming into 2020. Now it's a year later and I'm coming into 2021. And it was two, about two months ago when I was taking the dates down off the whiteboard calendar that we have here in the office on the other side of this wall in front of me. It's taking the dates down and it gives you the two month view. So I put all the November dates and all the December dates and New Year's Eve poetically fell right there on a Saturday to just give me this perfect grid of oh my God, that's like the entire rest of the year. That's all that's left in the year. And then all my head was filled with like all of this work that I needed to do to get the Snyder Cut where it's supposed to be and to get Galactic Rift where it was supposed to be. Like the Snyder Cut thing, I, I honestly got that, thought that was already going to be out by this point. And it's like, and I realized like, just like that whole experience working at the telemarketing place back in the day is this feeling of realizing like, if it's going to happen, it's going to need me to give everything I can to it. I'm going to need to dig deep and find heretofore untold levels of dedication and sacrifice and new priorities and a minimalist approach, streamline the whole operation. And then that brings us into what really this whole announcement here is about. So I'm retiring from this YouTube channel, but that's not going to play out how that sounds. What I mean by that is that my full-time focus has to be on getting these movies made, if they're ever gonna happen. All these things that I thought I needed to get in place before I could tackle this thing of making movies, I'm kind of shoving them all out of the way. So T-shirt empire, I don't have time. Trying to make music and get records out, don't have time. Booking shows and trying to be the king of the Comic-Con after party scene, like ain't got time. Just strip away everything that's not getting them movies made. So I'm still gonna make videos for this channel. And I thought very long and hard that the change that was gonna happen on this channel is that I just wouldn't commit to a weekly schedule anymore. And so I'd upload kind of maybe more like every month to six weeks, sort of when I've actually got something interesting that I wanna explore, something new that I wanna say, but just the week in, week out thing. I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years now, right? So it's kind of come, I feel like somebody who's been on Saturday Night Live for a long time and sort of knows that it's time to move on. The thing that I really realize is if I take my ego out of it, right? Like I've gotten a lot of mileage out of having the channel be called The Sean Ward Show and what that's been able to do for me and the doors that that's been able to open for me. But at the end of the day, this channel is not The Sean Ward Show. Like I've got ideas for videos that I want to make that wouldn't do well on this channel. And that's a hard ego b b thing that I've had to deal with. But it's, it, that's when I've got my ego in the way, right? If I look at it through a more productive lens, then I'm looking at it from the point of view that what we've built here is such a hub and a, a, a center for people who love the same stuff we love. And so what makes more sense than, than to keep trying to force it to be what, you know, this thing that represents my sort of like creative meandering. Instead, I could just like bring in help to help it be what the people who enjoy it enjoy about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm realizing that like, I've got this whole behind the scenes team that I don't need to like, let them go. I don't need to have a hard conversation with them. But instead, what if I let them bring their exuberance and passion to the front? Check this out. They've started taking our stuff and put it on TikTok. I didn't have any TikTok that I ran. Right, but these people behind the scenes, Trey and Val, shout out. They started a TikTok for us. It was called the Sean Ward Show, and there's a video that they made for the TikTok that I said it doesn't represent the Sean Ward Show brand, but at this point, I feel like it absolutely does reflect the brand of whatever is this thing that we all do together. Hashtag Team Super Funny is the thing, and Team Super Funny really became its own thing in that moment when I realized that there was stuff that actually did belong under the Team Super Funny brand, 
that might not even belong under the Sean War Show brand. So we changed the TikTok name from the Sean War Show to Team Super Funny, and it went from about 12,000 to now it's over 110,000 in about a month. So that speaks volumes. And so this channel's focus is gonna be more on the team and the community. So we've got this team who's got the talent, has got the dedication, has got the vision, has got the passion. And so at this point, shout out to sort of the main crew now, which is Trey and Val behind the scenes, Oliver, Danny, Stephen Kwame, Khalil, and Vicky. And this is the group that we put together who is representing the dream and who wants to see this thing succeed. So embracing what's working and running with it and being grateful for the blessings that have fallen into our laps through this YouTube channel is to lean into the brand Team Super Funny and let that flourish. We are gonna be seeing videos on this channel from other cosplayers and other parts of the world. We've got a squad in Korea. We got a squad in France. We got a squad in Brooklyn, New York. Plus our frequent collaborations with our friends in Orlando, Make Them Laugh Films. Jason, what up? The Sean Ward Show is still what it's always been. It was always something bigger and beyond just this YouTube channel. So if you if that if that's what you're a fan of, then the place to keep track of that is the SeanWardShow.com, and I'll let you know on there when I actually do upload videos on this channel. Because that whole thing I was talking about where maybe I'll do one every you know, four to six weeks kind of thing and take longer and work harder on it, this will still be the home for that. And you'll just get all this other additional stuff as well to keep you satisfied. So at this point, it's already very, very late and this video is already very long. So to anybody who's actually watched it all the way to the whole thing, let me know in the comments below because uh, this was a big ask to put up a video this long that's about this sort of meandering personal topic. But it's something that I felt like I owed you. It's something that I wanted to do. It's something that's long overdue. And uh, I'm glad that I could do it. And I'm glad that you joined me on this quest. So here's dreaming that we can see this YouTube channel blast off to even higher levels of success. How about we go for it? Let's get that 10 million subscribers diamond. Wouldn't that be awesome if I could do it with this team? And so the content is going to be coming at you fast and furious. There's just going to be more of it and more fun voices to hear. And, and we want to represent you and your voice. So be in touch. Show your support any way you can. Let us know you like what we're doing. And we will keep delivering the goods for you over many years to come. And I will work harder than ever to give you even bigger thrills than I've ever given you before. This is all what's coming in, well, like I said, the next 10 years, right? So let's uh, check in on each other in 2032 and see how we did, shall we? <laughs> now it's out there. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.